Hey guys, welcome back to OSPF Packet. Today, we are going to be taking a break from traditional tutorials and looking at network things, and we are going to be examining a bunch of keyboards and doing some sound tests and just having fun and looking at these things. I think that having a great keyboard is an awesome way to increase your uh, the just the satisfaction that you get out of being an engineer, an engineer typing all the time, being on a keyboard, a CLI, you know, 10 key, you're over here. Just it, There's some sort of satisfaction you get from hearing an awesome keyboard. So let's check these out together. So <clears throat> my video producer, Jacob Tate Tanner, is going to be uh, helping us out in this video from the background. I'm gonna be talking about these keyboards and he's going to be giving us some information on what they are and uh, and what they do. So, <clears throat> Jacob, what's this first keyboard we're looking at here? Okay, so that is our, going to be our test, like our, our benchmark. Um, that is the Apple Magic Keyboard. You can get the brand new wireless version for $119 on Amazon. Uh, it is, you know, standard Apple. Uh, it's got 10 keys and all the Apple deals about it. Awesome. Well, I'm going to uh, kick off a typing test here. And uh, it's gonna just do a one minute typing test. Um, so we will get a sound test here and see what just what it feels like. I'll give you my ideas when we're done. Cool, so I got 49 words per minute. I didn't uh, make any errors, surprisingly. And uh, yeah, so my adjusted speed is 49 words per minute on that, so I came in as a fluent typer. Uh, it felt really nice, like actually, there's not a lot of sound to it, but it's um, it feels nice, so you feel like you can be pretty direct with the keys and you don't have to be worried about um, touching two keys at a time or anything like that. So it felt it felt good. I think um, I'd like to, I'll just, hopefully this won't break anything. I'll pull up a notepad here. So I'm, for an engineer, if I'm typing 1000.1, 1000.10, like if I'm typing out some IP addresses, Two eight one three three zero eight zero zero four. Mike Jones. Um, anyway, dated myself there. Um, cool. So yeah, that's the keyboard. There's a. It looks like these probably integrate. Uh, they don't. Yeah. But so those are yeah. very specific to Apple. Yeah. Um, you know, just using Macs and stuff. I. So my theory is, I like it. You can tell it's not mechanical, but it's probably one of the better non-mechanical options you can get. Sure. Uh, and this, like, it has enough travel. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, to where you feel like you know you've clicked it. Like, a lot of, like, you know, your off the shelf, like Microsoft keyboards and whatnot, they just they feel so mushy. Whereas that one, it's not mechanical, but it's still tactile enough. Yeah, definitely. I, I, know, I know what you mean. That um, You can definitely tell that you've pushed the button. Yeah. So. There's no mistake. I haven't actually typed shut instead of no shut and turned an interface off that I didn't mean to. Sure. It also has a USB pass-through. <coughs> oh, does it? Yeah, on the bottom left. Oh yeah, USB pass-through on a single cable? Yeah. Wow. We'll look at that in a little bit too. So, cool. Well, Apple, uh, what'd Magic, you call it? Magic Keyboard. Magic Keyboard by Apple. So, this is the Red Dragon K530 Draconic 60% Compact RGB Wireless Keyboard. Wow. And the best part about this, the best part about it is you get a full mechanical keyboard uh, with hot stoppable switches, with, it, it's heavy, like you can pick it up, like it's got some weight to it, it doesn't feel cheap, you know? Um, it, 
Yeah, it has a stand. It's, you can connect up to three different computers with uh, via Bluetooth. It's USB Type-C for charging, on and off. The RGB isn't the best, but for $60, you cannot complain. I think actually it's like no, a 50, 54. 54. I just bought it, 54. This is my brand new one. I actually bought this keyboard. Uh, I saw yours and was like, I have to have one of those because, you know, I really miss um, laptop keyboards just don't cut it half the time for me. I just don't like them. Like some trackpads are okay, but I always have a mouse because I just can't stand the pad. And now I have a keyboard to go with it that I can carry with me. It feels, it's weighty. It doesn't feel cheap and I can take this with me and type loudly and annoy people no matter where I am, so. Yeah, so yeah. I, I love this keyboard. You get a lot for less than $60. You get a very nice And I haven't, I haven't really looked yet to see how this all works, but there's two different function keys. Yeah, that, so and there's like there's a G one through six, so those are probably like macro keys that you could have, like if you wanted to program your login to a switch to G one, where it typed your username, enter password, enter, and you got to the login prompt, just hit G one and bam, it logs you in or something like that. Um, so I could it, see that being beneficial. It only comes in uh, brown. It's Gateron brown switches. Okay. Which, I really like. I'm a fan of very linear switches rather than like clicky switches. So I'm a big fan of the Gateron brands. And we'll definitely hear the difference in those switches. Um, yeah, 100%. The clicky switches are uh, annoying for annoying people. That is what they were made for. Sure. Not the person typing necessarily, unless yeah. you've got a lot to type. They're fairly obnoxious to me. Like seven, eight cubicles down, they're like, what is that? Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> I digress. So we're gonna jump into our typing test on this and see if I can beat 49 words per minute on this keyboard. So let me uh, click this here. One minute test, start typing. Whew. Man, I got 60 words per minute on that one with no mistakes. I am uh, killing the no mistakes, mistake-free typing in the house. Anyway, um, man, I can't believe I got faster on that than I did on the other one. Yeah. I felt, cause I felt like I had to push a little harder on the keys, but maybe the maybe it was like the confidence of. Well, you do, so the. Uh of that firmness. So the Gateron Browns have a little bit, take a little bit more actuation force. Mm -hmm. um, and so, some, so something that I didn't mention earlier, but with that kit for, like again, I said, less than $55 at Micro Center, you also get a very nice metal keycap puller. You get a metal uh, key switch puller and you get four extra switches. So you get one brown, one black, one blue, and one red, in case you want to switch out your switches. Interesting. Yeah. And haven't you, so you've switched out, because we have another one here with a different keycap set on it. Yeah. And you've switched out some of the, sh the yeah. switches on like the backspace and enter and escape keys. Yeah, so we can go ahead and go to the next one. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so this one is the same as the last one, and it's my personal one. I use it at work a lot. It has custom uh, ninja print switches on it, or excuse me, not switches. It has custom ninja print keycaps on it. It also has a couple of the switches changed out. So I believe the enter is a blue, the escape is a red, and the backspace is a Gateron black. And you can tell that you can see the difference uh, that a cap makes between these two. So just because mine are, you know, probably a little bit higher quality caps that are custom, they're gonna have a little different, they're gonna have a little bit of a different feel to them. So I have, on this one, we are going to be actually uh, connected USB and we're looking at these beautiful, beautiful caps that I think I actually bought and you didn't you bought them for me. me. Now, so, so these keyboards connect via USB Type-C, which is interesting because another keyboard that's in this lineup here also has a removable K1 
cable to it and it's a micro USB and it is over double the price. So once again, for less than $55, you're getting a USB type C, wow. which is amazing compared to a micro USB. Yeah, no, no doubt, absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna jump in here. One, sentence, one minute test, text, start the typing test. And here we go. Man, that was uh, 38 words per minute with two typing errors at 36 words per minute. So those keycaps are not for you? They are not for me. Cause like, they're not where I'm used to looking. Sure. I think maybe I could get used to them. And it's a, and I don't have to look a lot, but that particular one, that, that particular typing test that I got had a lot of um, double quotes, double quotes and dashes in it yeah. for a lot of different things, commas and sure. there were a lot of that. So, so, it's the, so is it the keycaps themselves or is it the ninja print? I think it's the ninja print. I love the ninja print. It's the ninja print. It was harder to, it's, because what I'm like, I'm on the things that I'm not used to hitting a lot, like quotes and yeah. things like that. I, I was like, oh, wait, where is it at? Yeah. Okay. And I've gotten used to looking down like that. <clears throat> sure. The blue keycaps are definitely hard to read. Hard to read. Yeah. Not, yeah. I mean, yeah. So there, here's a. So I don't know which one's which. Enter is what. I so I believe enter is blue. Got it on blue. Um, escape. You can hear it. Yeah, very clicky. Um, that's red, and then the back is black. So the black is a little bit more clicky than the red, and the blue is definitely. I love, I love this keyboard. I it's, love, I love having something to take with me that I can have on me all the time. Comfortable keyboard that's not that. Yeah. So K530, uh, Draconic 60% is, I think it's the most bang for your buck keyboard on this table and arguably one of the best I've ever seen. Like you get so much. Uh, granted, it doesn't have designated arrow keys. It doesn't have you know the numpad. It doesn't have designated like insert and page up and down. Although you can use those via the integrated function keys. Um, it comes with, yeah. you know. And they're kind of, they're ninja print on here. To yeah. see where they are. I don't know if you can see that in the video or not, but. <clears throat> um, it comes with a keycap puller, a switch puller, extra switches, a sticker, USB yeah. type C, three different Bluetooth connections. It is the most bang for your buck keyboard I've ever seen. Yeah, definitely like it. I definitely recommend recommend this keyboard to you. Our next keyboard, I think, is going to be this uh, this guy here. Yeah. Okay. So that is the. Uh, it's missing a couple of caps right now. But that's okay. You can see the cherry blues. So this guy has two connections. This is the what? Which which uh, keyboard is this? So that is the Logitech G five twelve SC Light Sync. It's full RGB, USB pass through. Uh, it is a full-size keyboard. It's cherry blues. You can also get it in the Romer G tactiles, um, which are Logitech's proprietary uh, type of switch. Which we have that switch to show you later we on a different Logitech keyboard. keyboard. Um, <clears throat> it's a good keyboard. My thing is I don't like the blues. The blues are cool for gaming. That's really it. And I honestly, mm -hmm. I spend way more time doing productivity, such as like video editing, photo editing, than I do gaming. So it's just not, it's a cool keyboard. It's, and I love how thin it is. It's a full metal uh, chassis. It is a beautiful keyboard. It's just not the keyboard for me. Yeah, got it. Okay. I I had one of these and I liked it and I sold it because it made all my cube mates irritated. So um, it's a, to get the USB pass through, it's got two connections on it one of them has a keyboard on it and the other one has a usb thing on it so that tells us which one to plug in for the keyboard here since we're using my uh microsoft surface 3 laptop and uh it um it only has one usb port on it so there's that it uses logitech's <laughs> gaming software for the rgb control and the macro control that it does all right 
So, Logitech 512. Yeah. Clicky Blues. Clicky Blues. If you don't like the way these sound, at least in the short term, you might not be human. Long term, you're, yeah, you're human. All right, let's check this thing out. Oh man, your, your left shift key is gone. Oh. This is gonna be fun. Okay, yeah. here we go. It's great. It's fine. Here we go. Okay, so I got 26 words per minute without a backspace or a left shift key. So if you want to show them my Red Dragon, uh, the keycaps that are on that, um, the black ones are the original ones from my Red Dragon, and the blue and the white and the yellow ones are what is left over from the 60%. So that's, that is why I do have... I do have more keycap sets, but like, it's so much work to put on keycaps, so. It's fun to change them though, at least once. If you've never done that, you need to change them once. It's fun, but it's also very tedious. And Sweet, well, the clicky blue switches, um, they are nice. They work better when you have a shift and a backspace key, but it is loud. Especially the space bar. Please stop. Save us. All right. Clicky Blues. Disconnected. So, this is the Logitech G413. Uh, it is full mechanical, USB pass-through, metal chassis, braided cable. It's very similar to the G512 that we just looked at. It retails for about $85 to $90. Is that about how much you pay for it? I honestly don't remember. Oh, $85 to $90. The, I think the biggest difference is one, the Romer Gs, they're not, uh, you won't be able to find keycaps for the Romer Gs. The Romer Gs, our Logitech's proprietary uh, switch system, and nobody really makes caps for them because most people, especially in the gaming community, very much, <coughs> very much dislike the Rover G uh, switches, and it's not full RGB; it's just a solid red. Yeah, and it's hard to tell. This actually comes with keycaps that you can replace. Here, the one Q and A over to the D, and then up the R and the five, and across the numbers, they're. Uh, textured keys that I should have swapped out on these. So I don't know if you can see that in the image here, but um, I, I like it, I thought it was pretty cool. So um, we are going to test this bad boy out so you can hear the differences between the clicky blues and these proprietary Romer Gs. I actually kind of like them for typing on. So it, um, uh, this so, is- Yeah, and that's something, like I said earlier, most people very much dislike the Romer Gs very unpopular opinion. I love the Roma keys. Very cool. I, I like them too. I, this is actually the keyboard that I keep on my desk at the office. It's a, it's mechanical enough that, and sounds nice when you're typing on it, but it's not so loud and irritating that it bothers the people in the cubes next to you. They're kind of like, oh, it sounds like somebody's over there working. That's yeah. cool. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, to me, they feel they're very linear. Yeah. And they're very heavy switches. They are heavy switches. Very linear. Very I definitely heavy. feel like, that's my thing about on this keyboard is I feel like I have to really get after it. Yeah. To very type. heavy, very linear. So let's uh, do our one minute typing test and see what these sound like. And they have a shift and a backspace on them. So we might get more than 26 words per minute on this one. All right, here we go. We got 60 words per minute again. 
60 words per minute with no mistakes. So, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's worth noting that none of the Logitech keyboards that we are showing today come with a wrist rest. None of them do. Oh, yeah, there's no wrist rest here. Yeah, that's to true. To me, that's very important. I love wrist <laughs> I, I very much use a wrist rest all the time. I you're right. I use I have one on I have one back here that I'll I'll pull up when we get to my uh, my keyboard that I use on my desk here at the house. Yeah. So wrist in the studio. Yeah. So even like so the 512 that we were just looking at a minute ago, it is 129 dollars retail, no wrist rest. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's kind of like, disappointing. I feel like if you're going to have all the other, you know, bells and whistles that it does have, if you're gonna have the full RGB, if you're gonna have the USB pass through, you're gonna have the full metal chassis, then you need to have a wrist rest. I agree. Okay. I agree. Cool. That one has been good to me. I like it. I use it at work. All right, let's jump into our first Corsair. Or actually, we have one more Logitech. Do you wanna finish? Yeah, let's go. Off the Logitech okay. line. This is your 10 keyless, right? Yes, sir. <clears throat> is this the one you were talking about that's uh micro usb yeah so this is the um so this keyboard is the logitech g pro mechanical it is a 10 keyless so i use this one for the longest time where i work because uh, i like the compactness of not having the 10 key and i didn't really need a 10 key where i was working it was just mostly like writing emails um and video editing and things mm -hmm. like that so that was nice to be able to take it on the go until i got the red dragon and I still keep it there every now and then. I'll break it out if I want something different, but um, it's a really good keyboard. The Romer G's, once again, I love them. Sweet. Well, it looks nice. It's a uh, rounded, yes. rounded corners. It's it, it's plastic, but it doesn't feel. No, it's got some weight to it. So it is plastic. plastic. It's not metal like the other two Logitechs, mm -hmm. but it's a good looking keyboard. Like, it is me, a good looking keyboard. Like it is a good looking keyboard. It's not obnoxiously like. And that's, that's my whole thing with Logitech keyboards. None of them are like obnoxiously gamery or over the top like a Razer or Corsair. Sure. And yeah, we'll have one of those next. Cool. Well, let's uh, take this typing test and see what we get. All right, here we go. Forty-six words per minute with one mistake, yeah, so forty-five words per minute on that one. So yeah, it felt good. That was the another one that had a lot of um, off typing on it. So it was, yeah. but I did feel like they were easier to see, easier to know where to go because it just it felt more tradi more traditional. Sure, I really with the like keycaps. That's probably that keyboard's probably the <clears throat> one that I can type on the fastest. It um yeah, it's, it's not. I like the sound. I mean, it's kind of like the other yeah, Romer G's. Very they do sound a little different than the other Romer G's to me. Maybe it's different key cap, caps. type of caps. Yep. Different key caps. But it's just, I like it a lot. It's, um, you know, I'm very fast on it. Uh, I'm just very linear, very heavy switches. Works really well for me. Yeah. Cool. I like it. Yeah. I might have to get one of these next. Cool. Well, it's got raised things on it too. I didn't raise it up. I usually like to raise them up. Cool, well, let's check out the next one. All right, and next we bring you the... So this is the Corsair K70 Mark II. Um, it retails for $160. This was my very first mechanical keyboard. Um, I, As I think most people's. Yeah, it's very standard. It's a very basic keyboard, I love it. Um, I, I would argue that between this keyboard and the um, Logitech G Pro are probably the two keyboards that I used the longest and I loved the most. Um, so it is, it comes with cherry reds. It has a volume wheel, full media controls, which is something that I don't think, oh, yeah, yeah it works. dedicated media controls. I haven't installed any drivers or anything. It's just working. Yeah. 
Um, cool. So it uses the Corsair program to do all the RGB and the macros and whatnot. Yeah. And so the full dedicated media controls, that's something that up to this point, I don't think any other keyboard has had that we tested. Yeah. Um, all of the rest of them, you have to press like function and then like one, you know what I mean, to do volume and things like that. Right, yeah, these are dedicated without having to yeah. touch anything else. You, there's also, you can install three different, um, <laughs> You can install three different color profiles on it at once. You can change the brightness right there. USB pass-through, it is metal, it is very thick. It's probably the thickest of all the keyboards. Yeah, yeah. And it's got the thickest braided cable I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, and um, right now it has, um, it has <coughs> non-original keycaps that have like an opaque bottom to where you can see through more RGB. Uh, they're nothing special. I think they were like twenty, twenty-five dollars. These are actually the same keycaps I have on my Steel Series. Yes. Yeah. So, cherry reds. I, cherry reds are kind of, I think, are described as like the kind of the industry standard. Industry um, standard. Yeah. They're kind of the most basic between like on the scale from linear to clicky. They're kind of dead center. Got it. Yeah. Well, let's jump into this uh, test and see what we come out with. Wow, that's interesting. So 57 words per minute, but I made seven mistakes really? on it and 50 words per minute. It's by far the most mistakes I've made. So the key cap, either I'm getting tired, I need another Red Bull. So of the keyboards that we've done so far, by far the lightest touch. Yeah. Most the lightest the touch, like least, least resistance. So I've been on these keyboards where I'm having to to get them to type and this one you just kind of like oh uh, uh, that i i think I, oh no and then you've typed like 60 letters <clears throat> and you're like oops didn't I mean think, to do that they're very light yeah part of it i think is the keycaps those keycaps are very light keycaps whereas like the ones on my red dragon are very heavy mm -hmm. right? and those are um and even like the ones on my steel series apex are kind of more quality heavy ones those are lighter ones got it it's a great keyboard. It's a great it's keyboard, but fantastic. It's very gamery compared to anything that we've looked at so far. Yeah, very true. The RGB is fantastic on it. It is. It definitely looks good. This is my baby right here. Um, this is the one that I use on the daily in my office here at the house. Uh, and I'm excited to see what we can do. I'm actually gonna grab my, uh, it's got a magnetic uh, wrist rest here that just pops right on. Steel Series. Steel Series, so. It's so cool. This is the Steel Series Apex Pro Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. Um, it comes with a plastic wrist rest that's uh, magnetic, but it's a very smooth written plastic. You know it's I mean? like a rubber coating on the yeah, top. Yeah, it's very kind of rubbery plastic and it's nice. Um, one of the cool features, so it has a volume wheel, it has USB pass-through, uh, but it has a OLED display in the top right. And so, I saved our keyboards from dying. <laughs> so it has an OLED display in the top right where you can go into the Steel Series Apex software and you can display anything you want on it. So you can put a picture of yourself, you can put like statistics, anything. It's all can, you know, literally anything you want. You just upload You can upload a GIF. You can actually, I was I saw that there are certain profiles you can load yes. with games that you might play yeah. where you can have it display your health and like your Magicka or whatever uh, in a little graph there that will change with the game and it updates through some yeah. API call that maybe will 
dive into APIs one day, but not yeah. today. So this is the most expensive uh, keyboard that we have on the table. It is just shy of $200. So you can get the Pro that has adjustable switches so you can make it more linear, more clicky, more tactile. Or you can get the, um, it's not cherry, it's uh, Steel Series Red. They feel you know just like a cherry red in a sense. Um, they're very good, full RGB, uh, you know, 10, you know, you have your 10 keys, uh, full metal chassis, it's very well built. It's a good keyboard. I like it. Yeah. That's why she's my daily driver. Yeah, the OLED, the OLED is really what kind of sets it apart. Yeah, That's definitely. Like really cool. Thing. It's cool, I, I, right now it says OSPF packet on it. Yeah. Um, I have done several different things. You, it's not just a static image, you can put a GIF on it, or a GIF, however you say it. I, I had this debate on Twitter a couple of uh, nights ago. I think it's probably technically GIF because it's a graphical use, uh, graphical interface format, so interchange format. So it's probably a GIF. Sure. Anyway, I digress. Yeah. The <laughs> so right now on yours you have the HyperX keycaps that are the same that's on yes. my Corsair. Yes. The exact same as what's on Corsair. And two, this I feel like is a good mix between the like the very professional. Um, the, per, the professional look of the Logitech and then the overwhelming look and gamery look of the Razer and the Corsair. This sure. is a very, this is a balance of those two. Yeah, definitely. I can see that. <clears throat> so, all right, well, let's take this bad boy for a spin and see what we get. Sixty-one. I got one extra word on my baby. With one. With one mistake. So yeah, I got sixty. Sixty words per minute. And so yeah, these are definitely a light actuation. Um, yeah. On they're, the, they're the same, that same light actuation, so they type much faster. Yeah, it's it's similar to the Corsair. They're very light, and I think you have very light keycaps on them. Yep. They. Uh, yeah, the reds are a good mix between the very clicky and then the very linear. Yeah. I don't know, do the does the Corsair do the whole thing where you can route the power cable in a different direction? Do any of the others? Or the the USB connection? The Logitech 512 does. Does it okay. So there's something cool that i I kinda like on these is it's got this groove on it and you can you can actually take the cable and route it through the groove and have it come out on the left side, the right side, or the center, depending on what your desk or what your setup looks like. So I, I don't, I don't even know if that makes a difference to anybody. Uh, it's, it's neat, it's cool. Um, just something worth mentioning, I think. Which, uh, which other keyboard had it? The Logitech uh, G512 has it. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, well, we got one more to look at here. It is, in fact, uh, the same keyboard with different keycaps. Yeah, so this is, you know, the Apex with the, it's the exact same keyboard. It just has different keycaps on it and they're a little bit premium keycaps. Like I think I paid um, $70 for these. So they have a little bit of a feel to them. It also has dampeners on the switch. Oh yeah. In the back. Oh, cool. Yeah. So yeah, here's the dampeners, O-rings that you can put on the switches to dampen them a little bit. Yeah. Makes so, you, it sound a little so you put that on there and it kind of gives it more, it kind of settles it down so it can make it quieter. Um, it kind of gives it a little bit of a softer feel in a sense, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, that's cute. You've got a picture of you and Morgan on your OLED display. Oh, yeah, I do. Uh, that's cute. Thank you. You're cute. And you can tell that I'm not uh, terrible because I have mine just set to one static color instead of rainbow barf. Yes, mine was blue and white. Anyway, sweet. Well, same keyboard, different keycaps with different, with O-ring dampeners on them. You want me to drive this one or are you gonna take this one first? Hey, one? This is your baby. Yeah, so. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this time I'm going to try it with a wrist rest. Hopefully that'll help. Um, this is not, this is not my favorite keyboard that I've ever used. Um, the G Pro with the Romer G's are probably my favorite. The only thing is what led me to replace that was I couldn't replace the keycaps. I just got tired of looking at black. Um, and then the Corsair, that's a really good keyboard. This was, I think when I bought this, I was just looking for something a little bit different and I've had it for, I don't know, what would you say, about three months now? Yeah. Three or four months. No, yeah, probably more than that. I've probably had it since January. So eight months, I've probably had it about eight months. And um, I like it a lot. It's a good keyboard. It's not my favorite, but it's a good keyboard. And it feels super premium, especially like the OLED, full metal um, volume wheel and control. It's, it just feels premium. All right, let's go. Forty words per minute, one this type. So I did worse on this than I did on the Corsair, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Or maybe not. Or was was it? Thirty-eight. Maybe it was a thirty-eight one. Okay, so I did. I did better. Yeah, you did. You increased so, by one. Good for there me. Go. I'm still, what does that consider me? 40, I'm average. Oh, that's upsetting. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I'm only slightly better. Fluent. I'm not, we're not even in the fast range. 65 is fast. Yeah, no, I have an undying respect for people who can type uh, very fast with a few mistakes. Yeah. Undying respect. <laughs> Yeah, man, uh, this is pretty cool. I, oh, wow. I don't know that I've ever typed on it before with the other rotating yeah. stuff. You like it? I might have to get some. It's also the keycaps. The keycaps are a little bit heavier. Hey! If you're still concerned about what you want to get or what you're looking at, you can spend a little bit of money on Amazon and get some keycap testers. And these come with they're these little resin uh, bases and it's got all the different keys, the switches on it. This isn't going to test keycaps, but it's going to test your switches. And um, you can see through the because they're clear you can see the colors of the switches below and it comes with a little card that tells you what's what but so the the bigger one is cherry switches these the smaller one are gatheron switches okay so cherry switches it looks like this is red here so that's what we did yeah i mean so There's your clicky blues. <laughs> find those, uh, uh, those aren't hard to find at all. Mm -hmm. So yeah, these can give you an idea if you wanna figure out what kind of sound you're looking for on the switches. So you can pick those up on Amazon. How, how much do these got around you? Uh, I think they're about 15 to 20 dollars a piece. Okay, yeah, it's so. kind of expensive to test out, but you, know, you could buy it, test it out, figure out what you want, and then call Amazon and tell them you want to return it. it wasn't or what you, you thought it was. Or you can always have them, and you can show your buddies like I'm doing right yeah. now. Yeah, or you can buy some for you and show them off on your YouTube channel. So, man, this has been a good break from network tutorials. It's been a good break from teaching different things and looking at uh, all the all that kind of stuff. So I've, I have thoroughly enjoyed going through and looking at all these different keyboards that we've used. I think it's really important to find a keyboard that works for you that you can uh, have at your desk, whether it's like my favorite, the Apex 7 uh, that I keep at my desk from Steel Series, or if it's the Red Dra if it's the Red Dragon wireless best bang for your buck mechanical keyboard that you can keep in your backpack that you can take with you uh, anywhere you go or anything in between. I think it's important to find a keyboard that works for you and what you like to hear and how it feels and what is uh, efficient for you and your job and whatever it is that you might be doing. So uh, I hope that you found this video uh, 
useful and that it's been a good break for you from the tutorials and all that other stuff. We'll be back with more, uh, more network intensive stuff in the future, but this was awesome to take a break. So if you liked the video, please subscribe, click the bell. Uh, we love to see the numbers of people that are following the channel continuing to grow. I think we hit 230 um, the other day, so it's been pretty cool. I started this thing thinking, man, we might have we might have five people that like this and have 230 people uh, checking the channel out. It's pretty cool. So thank you. Uh, check it out. I hope you enjoy it. I have a lot of fun doing this. That's what it's all about. So we'll catch you guys next time. See you next week.